Hi, today we're going to be looking at percentages, decimals, and fractions. And their equivalences. So, what do I mean by that? Well, if we start off with 100%, well, hopefully we we'll all know that 100% is a decimal. You can think of it as 1 or 1 1.0. And as a fraction, that would be 1 out of 1. Now, if we think of something else, well, what would half of 100% be? Well, we'd have 50%. And hopefully you'll know that that's equal to 0 0.5. And as a fraction, we can write that as a half. Now we start to get onto some of the slightly trickier ones. So we can think, well, what about if we go smaller than a half or smaller than a half? We'd have a quarter. Right, well, that's what's that going to look like as a percentage or as a decimal? Well, what we want to do really is think, well, one quarter or one divided by four well, if we had 1 divided by 4, think of doing that with the bus stop method. We'd say 1 divided by 4, which looks quite strange here. But if we put a decimal point and a couple of zeros, we can see, well, 4 doesn't go into 1. So we get a 0 there, decimal point. So we carry the 1 across. How many times does 4 go into 10? We've got 4, 8, that's twice and 9, 10, 2 remainder. So now we've got how many times does 4 go into 20? We've got 4, 8, 12, 16, 20. That's 5 times. So the decimal would be 0 0.25. And in the percentage, well, we're going to have 25%. We'll put that underneath. Right, OK, now what about if we had three quarters? Well, that's just going to be three lots of 25 if this is one quarter. So three times five, five, ten, fifteen. And two times three is six, plus one is seven. So we get 75% for three quarters. And as a decimal, well, one way to think of getting the decimal you might not have realised it from these ones, but what we're doing is we're taking the percentage and we're moving the decimal point to places. So with the 75%, with the decimal point, which is at the end at the moment, because we haven't got any decimals, move it once, twice, we're going to get 0 0.75. Now, some other ones that are quite nice to work with, we can have... 10%. Now, 10%, you can think of that as 0. Point, well, if it's 10%, we're just going to have 0. 0.1. So again, think the decimal point at the end, it's moved once, twice. Now, if we've got this as a fraction, this 1 here, this is the tenths column. So, 1 tenth just be 1 over 10. So if we had 2 tenths, so 0 0.2, 20%, we'd have 2 over 10. Now we can go on to some, some slightly tricky ones over here as well. So let's think of, uh, what about if we had 15%? Well, again, we can move the decimal point twice and say, well, that's the same as 0 0.15. Now, as a fraction, well, if you think 15% just means 15 out of 100. Okay, but what we can do with this is think, well, we can actually simplify this. So this is going to go smaller. And the way I can see that is can, we're going to be looking for factors, numbers that go into both 15 and 100. Well, I know if a number ends in a 5 and a 0, then 5 must be able to go into it. 
So fives into 15, we're going to have 5, 10, 15, that's three times. And we could do the same with 100, keep going through our five times table, or we can think of it as bus stop method again. And say five doesn't go into one, but five into 10, five, 10, that goes twice, and five into zero for zero times. So we've got, we can write it as 15 over 100, or simplify that down to three over 20. And what you'll find is the more of these that you do, the more comfortable and familiar you'll get with some of the simplified versions as well. Now, if we've got something a little bit different, like 23%, well, the decimal should be nice, because we're going to move the decimal point twice and say, well, that's just 0 0.23. And so as a fraction, we would just write it as 23 over 100. Yeah, don't need to simplify that any further. Now, if we start with the fractions, one of the fractions that we haven't covered yet is this one here, 1 over 3, or 1 third. Now, with this one, what we're going to do is, a bit like we did with the division for the quarter, we're going to say 1 divided by 3. So, we'll have our bus stop. 1, and we're going to divide it by 3. Well, 3 won't go into 1, so I'm going to give myself a few zeros at the end. But because they're after the decimal point, I've not changed the value. It's still 1. It's just 1.000. So you say, does 3 go into 1? No, put a 0 there. But we carry the 1. So 3 into 10, we've got 3, 6, 9. That goes 3 times. And then one more is carried over. So again, we say 3 into 10. Well, it's going to be the same. 3 and 1 carried over. So this pattern's going to continue. And what we can do is we can just put a dot on the top to show that this number is going to continue forever. So it's going to be 0 0.3333333, whatever. But instead of keep writing all the threes, we just put the dot on top. Now, if we want to turn that into a percentage, well, we're going to move the decimal point twice. So we would end up with 33.3%. And for completeness, we can put a dot over the three there. Okay. Now, if we've got two-thirds, it's going to be the same kind of thing, but instead of 333, three, we're going to have 0 0.666 referring. So the same with the percentage, we'd have 66.6%. Usually it's recognised that this is equivalent to two-thirds. You don't have to put the recurring on, but it's useful to know what that means. Okay. And with these ones, I say you can work them out using the bus stop method there, but it's really good if you can get used to seeing them. If you see lots of threes, think of thirds, lots of sixes, think of two thirds. Now, we've had 100% over here, we've had 10%. What about if we've got 1%? Well, you could be very tempted to write 0 0.1, but if you recall, this is the tenths. Okay, so that's not really going to work here because if it's, this was a tenth, well, that would be 1 divided by 10. And we know that's not the case because 1% is going to be 1 divided by 100. So 1 divided by 100 or 1 one hundredth. So 0 in the tenths, but a 1 in the hundredths column. So again, these two, it's easy to get them mixed up. 10%, 1%. Or if you think of it as money, put a pound sign in front of it, 0 0.01, this would be 1p, 1%, 1p. And just to finish off, let's have a 0.5%, because we can get decimals with percentages. Now, again, we'd want to move the decimal point twice, uh, so we'd want to move it that way, wouldn't we? So that would be, if we've got the 0 0.5, move the decimal point twice, once, twice. And then I can just rub that one out. Ooh, it's a bit messy. So as a decimal, it would be 0 0.005.
Now, if we want to write that as a fraction, well, you can think we've all got 0 0.5 over 100. But you can't have a decimal in a fraction, really. That doesn't work. So what can we do to get rid of the decimal? Well, we can multiply it by 10. So we can move the decimal point over here. So instead of 0 0.5, it just becomes 5. But because we multiplied by 10 on the top, we need to multiply by 10 on the bottom. So 0.5% would be the same as 5, not over 100, but 5 over 1,000. Okay, so I hope you found that useful, and uh, I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you.